I'm Bob Chen. I'm actually retired, but I just retired in January from Columbia University, where I ran a center called the Center for International Earth Science Information Network, or CSIN. So I got involved uh, with ESET before it was officially an organization. And at that point, I was running a um, NASA center called the Socioeconomic Data and Application Center which is one of the NASA distributed active archive centers. And NASA was encouraging the DACs, the data centers, to interact more with the broader earth science community. Um, but there wasn't really a community or an organization that facilitated that kind of interaction with, between users and the scientists producing data and the uh, centers that were distributing the NASA data. Uh, so there was a lot of early discussion about how to get that community together. And one of the uh, outputs of a lot of discussion was this idea that we needed this federation of Earth Science Information Partners. I started out as, an, as a scientist in, in the climate field, um, although one of my skills that, you know, you did as a student was as a Fortran programmer. So I learned how to analyze data using nine track tapes and uh, kind of the old style way of processing data. And uh, yeah, the science community was focused on the, the scientific research and the papers and publications. Um, the idea that data itself, that there was something called data science um, was slow to emerge. And then people started realizing that they could learn things from other disciplines. Uh, actually, I worked for an econometrics firm for a while and learned uh, all about time series analysis from the econo econometrics field, which was very applicable in the climate arena. Uh, so that the idea that there was a community of people who uh, supported science through data science and analytics uh, was fairly new. And I think ESIP came along at a time when that was starting to become more of a uh, awareness in the earth science community and helped uh, kind of form other things like the uh, the informatics section of the American Geophysical Union that kind of came after. So ESIP was ahead of, of those kinds of groups and identifying this as kind of a viable field. ESIP is valuable for on a number of levels. It's um, Again, it's this community of people who share an interest coming from all different directions. And it's not just, you know, originally it was mostly about satellite remote sensing data, but it's really expanded into that whole realm of uh, relevant data and uh, including uh, socioeconomic and other kind of data that are about the people that are affected by uh, what's happening on the earth. Of course, there are many challenges. Uh, some of them, uh, like climate change and sea level rise, have been around when you know when I was a grad student, and uh, they've obviously become a lot more pressing and and uh, a lot of ways in which we understand, but also need to learn to respond is through you know scientific knowledge. Uh, but having specific data about specific times and places and being able to make predictions. So that's, I think, where the biggest challenge is, which is not just to produce and use data as a scientific endeavor, but actually to make it usable and applicable uh, in decision making. Uh, you know, there's a lot of that theme going on in, in this meeting. There are a lot of people from the private sector who, who support policy and decision making. And... Um, getting all of the science and data and information into a form that can actually affect decision making is, is a big challenge. And I think ESIP has been focused on that for some time now. It's not entirely clear that people take issues like climate change seriously. And, you know, we need a coherent community response to uh, make sure that these kinds of efforts are supported and are as effective as they can be. So I think ESIP has been important in that role and in uh, highlighting the importance of these activities to the larger, uh, both science and, and policy communities.